Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And we begin with a breaking news along Gratian Avenue in Roseville, where a driver is rushed to the hospital after a road rage shooting. We can't seem to go too many days right now without a road rage shooting. That driver was shot at a red light just north of 13 Mile in the southbound lanes of Gratiot. Police said the gunman approached the car on foot and opened fire several times. The police say they have that suspect in custody. The victim, meanwhile, though, is listed in critical condition. We'll keep following the story. Our other top story here at 11, there has been a line of cars all night at one local gas station. That's right. That's because drivers in Dearborn saw how cheap gas was going for and couldn't resist. In fact, it appears they're still lined up at the Sitco on Michigan Avenue. Jason Colthorpe is there. Uh, and what did you say the price was, Jason? <laughs> Well, there's better development with what you just said. I'll explain oh, in a minute. But yes, please, at least we can enjoy this gorgeous, beautiful sign showing under $4 a gallon for gas. The only problem is, take a look. Yeah, there are there is a line of cars coming in, but I'm gonna let's just walk them right up to the pump. Uh, they've been stopping, they've been looking, and they've been leaving. I think they may have just sold out. This happened just moments ago where the line has been down the street off Michigan Avenue all evening and just moments ago I think everybody realized they're either stopping temporarily or they're out of gas but people have enjoyed all night take a listen that is not a sign of the times I almost made a U-turn to come back get to the station yeah I like I had a heart attack I couldn't believe it was like what, 395 it's not been that and I don't know how long. The Sitco in Dearborn is known for being lower than the other guys, but this is what some might call divine unleaded intervention. It's like, thank you, Jesus. Ah! <laughs> it's about time. We need a break. And it drew long lines off Michigan Avenue for hours Thursday. I had to pull over. I come here a lot, man. I had to pull over, grab it. They were almost five dollars, three ninety-five. Keep on going down. I love it. They just might keep going down. Gas analyst Patrick DeHaan reporting gas prices have now fallen for 30 straight days. At one point, it was costing over 90 bucks to fill my car up. So let's see what we're going to do today. Yes, that's a great idea. And while she's filling up, let me just mention this station is the only one in Michigan under four bucks right now, according to Gas Buddy. So, how'd we do? Yep, wouldn't even take $60. I'll take this all day long. I'll say about 20 bucks today. Can't beat it. Welcome relief. Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Michigan now with this price, even though it doesn't look like they're selling at the moment, is now the 32nd state that has at least one station under $4 a gallon. Now, while this looks awful and a real bummer, like this gentleman right here, he's finding out right now that the pump has stopped. He isn't quite sure. He's thinking, hey, They've got cheap gas. I thought I was getting up here. There was no line. What a break. And now, yeah, it looks like they're out of gas. However, they lowered it from 405 down to 395 earlier today. And there is at least one other station, I believe the BP, on Michigan here in Dearborn. That's also 405. So it's not 395, but still a pretty good deal. Back to you. Okay. So, Jason, is there any prediction of how long that Gas Buddy winning streak might get to? Oh, the number of days in a row that yeah, the price yeah, yeah, has yeah. been falling. Yeah, well, they do expect it to continue, and at least the analyst, Patrick DeHaan, thinks it could rival that long slide we had during COVID during the uh, the shutdown, which was in the 60s. Uh -huh. So hopefully it's the start of a trend that, as you heard, a lot of drivers have been waiting for. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, Jason, thank you. And hopefully fresh gas truck coming soon. In the morning, right, or tonight. Resupply, right. <laughs> uh, disturbing allegations tonight out of Oakland County. A man is charged with groping an employee inside Marshall's Home Goods store in Rochester Hills. Pamela Osborne is there live with how he was caught, Pam. Kimberly and Devin, it was actually surveillance video from inside of the store that allowed police to identify that suspect and then make the arrest. Investigators say the incident happened at this Marshall's Home Goods store in Rochester Hills on July 1st. 
An employee at the store was working when a man who police later identified as 53-year-old Brian Lamont Swan touched her from behind in a sexual manner. She called police. When Oakland County Sheriff's deputies showed up, they took a look at surveillance videos. It allowed them to identify Swan, who was arrested at his home in Sterling Heights without incident. He was arraigned Thursday on one charge of fourth-degree criminal sexual conduct. Swan is at the Oakland County Jail tonight, but the story doesn't end here. That's because it's because detectives in nearby communities, they are investigating to see if Swan was somehow connected to similar incidents. Reporting live in Rochester Hills, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. Pam, thank you. Right now, an investigation is underway after a bicyclist is hit and killed by a driver in Detroit. Officers tapped off, taped off the area over at Hayes and Outer Drive. And you can see a crushed bike and a pair of shoes there in the street. Uh, police say a man was hit by a car and killed, but the driver did stay at the scene and is cooperating with police. Right now, police are looking for the person who shot three people near downtown Detroit. Two of them were killed. Another critically wounded in the shooting happened on East Larned at Orleans Street. Police say someone in a black SUV pulled up to a Ford Edge and started shooting. Officers are interviewing a passenger as they try to learn more about what happened. We talked with a neighbor who says they cannot deal with any more violence. We need help because something is wrong. I thought the pandemic would slow us down, but unfortunately, the world is still going in a rage. Police are asking anyone who may have seen something or may know something to come forward. A body found on Detroit's west side could be missing retired Detroit police officer Stefan Hodo. Police found a body today in a small wooded area at Stopel Park near Outer Drive in Auburn. We're told Hodo's cell phone last sent a signal in that area. He's been missing since June 30th. That's when a man was caught on video firing one of his guns and driving his car. Police say the former officer could be the victim of foul play. They're waiting for a positive identification. We're going to let the medical examiner do their evaluation to see if we can identify the body that we found. Sadly, uh, a lot of things are pointing to uh, that may in fact be our retired police officer. Yeah, well, police say they could not find a cause of death when they saw the body. Now to a local 4 News update. Sources say a man is arrested in Illinois for a deadly road rage shooting that happened in Canton Township. We started this newscast talking about a road rage shooting. A 37-year-old Belleville man was shot several times after a fight in traffic on Haggerty Road. This was last month, and that man later died from his wounds. The driver took off, was found last week, as we said, in Illinois. Police say he's being extradited back to Michigan to face murder charges. Meanwhile, 33-year-old Maria Phillips was arraigned last month for her alleged involvement in that incident. She was charged with accessory after the fact. She's currently being held in the Wayne County Jail. Tomorrow, the Detroit Police Department will hold a vigil in honor of Officer Lauren Kortz, who died in the line of duty last week. It's happening at DPD's second precinct from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. The department will be joined by Officer Kortz's family. The public can also pay their respects over the weekend with viewings scheduled both Saturday and Sunday at Greater Grace Temple. The funeral service is set for Monday at 1130 a.m. also at Greater Grace. All right, now to a story we first reported last night at 11. Tonight we are hearing from a Milford man who lost his prosthetic leg in a lake. Thankfully, a police dive team was able to save the day. Brandon Smith says he was climbing back on a boat in Sunrise Lake when he felt his $80,000 prosthetic leg. In fact, he just had it for a short period of time. It came off. Smith says he was devastated. Just got the leg a few weeks ago, still getting used to it, but he quickly sprung into action in hopes of finding it. Everything that I was able to do just totally stopped. He, after he was done being upset, he pinned his location. So, and I would have never thought to do that. No, who would have? And it made a difference. The Oakland County Sheriff dive team spent an hour identifying the location and then found the actual leg within three minutes of going into the water. Brandon says he has an appointment tomorrow to better secure his leg. Best story of the day right Isn't there. Isn't it something? Yeah. And thought to drop it, a pin yeah. with his phone. That's Brilliant. Huge, yeah.